Fighting on the shore, relentless in the war The legions in our hearts, shed what us in our bars The spirit and the flesh, the emotions that arrest The cerebral will contest, propelling the unrest Preachers and bandits with means on the hand The teachers pedantic and lack understanding So sweep out the sand with the broom in your hand Stand up, make we bone Babylon Cause I can give the world to you, the world to you But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you lurk in demons searching the spirit and the women fight the battle within cause i can give the world to you the world to you but the falling of the curtain is for certain be careful where you're lurking demons searching the spirit and the women fight the battle within Of a blaze with gratitude and rage, we touch another page with delirious delight, impervious to light. This vitality and might encourages the flight. Preachers and bandits with means on the hand, and the teachers pedantic and lack understanding. So sweep out the sand with the broom in your hand. Stand up, make we born Babylon. Yes, I can give the world to you, the world to you, but the falling of the curtain is for certain. Be careful where you lurk in demon searching. The spirit and the women fight the battle within Guess I can give the world to you, the world to you But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you're lurking, demons searching The spirit and the women fight the battle within But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you lurk in demons searching The spirit and the whim will fight the battle within Cause I can give the world to you, the world to you But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you lurk in demons searching The spirit and the whim will fight the battle within You got sound now? <laughs> My bad. Let me get a one in the chat if the sound is back. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to Nicer in the house. Shout out to Dr. Thunder. Thank you. Seems like the sound is back. My apologies. So yes, yes, yes. The objections will stand in the way of your plans, your goals, your contracts, your deals, your money, or yeah, your money. Who's got your money? Who's got your money and what's standing between you and that money? <laughs> Who's got your deal? Who's got your influence? Who's got your contract? Whatever it is you may be trying to get, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to one and all, all coming in the house.
So, first of all, let's talk about exactly what we mean by overcoming objections. Let's just look at the two words, two word phrase, overcoming objections. Objections, if we were to create a mental model for it, all right, it's not like picking a lock, okay? This overcoming objections thing is not like picking a lock. Closing the deal is more like picking a lock than overcoming objections. It is not solving a puzzle. It's not a debate. It's not wrestling with your clients, with the person you're trying to influence. Yeah, shout out to Dr. Thunder in the house for the thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for the $5 super chat. He says, paying my respects monetized. Yes. Yes, indeed, it did happen. And Julius Minor in the house says, peace. Yes, so as I said yesterday, I'm going to repeat it. Thank you guys very much and congratulations to you guys because this, okay, in other words, the monetization is because of your views and your subscriptions. It had nothing to do with me. So congratulations and thank you and we appreciate it. You do, I do, we all do. So speaking of monetization, how do we get over those objections that stand between us and our money? Us and our deals, us and our outcomes, the desired outcomes. So looking at it, from a sales standpoint, overcoming objections is something that is a typical, rather dry, basic accoutrement topic, something to focus on and talk about. But let's just talk about it from a very basic standpoint and in a way that can be generalized and applied to many different aspects of influencing and persuasion and straight up selling maybe. And we have to understand that the objections are not like a lock or a puzzle or a wrestling match or a debate. It is more like a ball of wax or a heap of wax that needs to be melted away And you need to find the objections. You need to understand the category of, object of objection it is. You need to understand that they're not going to tell you their obje the objections up front. You need to be able to reduce the barrier to entry for this particular outcome that you're looking for. You need to demonstrate that to the client, remove the inertia, so on and so forth. In other words, the objection is not a wrestling match to fight with your client. Closing the deal is more technical. Closing the deal is like, or it has aspects to it that are like picking a lock or solving a puzzle. But overcoming objections is a little different. And we're trying to tease apart, remove at least the closing the deal from overcoming objections. Now, overcoming objections is required in doing everything. Getting the appointment, you need to overcome objections. In other words, asking for anything. And there are many asks in any particular sale, if you will. Shout out to everyone in the house, ladies and gentlemen. We are talking about overcoming objections, a very simple topic. 
and we're making it actionable and realistic. We're asking who's got my money? Who's got your money? Who's got our money? Everything that you want, money, influence, power, relationships, any of these things in any combination of whatever it is you want, someone else has. In other words, we are social creatures and there is a marketplace for everything. There is a marketplace for everything. And it's not saying that everything is transactional and base. No, that's not what it has to mean. <laughs> and transactional does not necessarily have to mean base and without value and merit. But everything you want, everything you want, everything you desire, someone else has. And there are always objections to get to your desired outcomes. So let's break it down. Let's do a simple one. This is not going to be a long one, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys very kindly for showing up. So basically, let's go ahead and share a simple PDF here and talk about, in an overall way, having looked at what objections are like. And we're saying that they're not like picking locks. In other words, overcoming it is not like doing that. It's about finding the objection and acknowledging it, addressing it, and perhaps getting to a point where you are asking questions again. That particular little dance where you find something, acknowledge, and then get to a point where you ask a question. That is addressing An objection and overcoming the objection is about how you address it. And there are many things to think about, generally speaking, but we'll get the first one out of the way. The first one written on this PDF here, the little jottings that I just did. The first one is the obvious one, okay? And we're gonna go through this list quickly to go just to give quick a quick overview, and then we'll go one by one. Made a video the last of this kind of video that I made was an interview with uh, Aitwa, AKA New Game. And we talked about closing the deal. Coffee is for closers. Prior to that, we talked about the five buying stages, okay? There's also been conversations about simplicity being the key to selling, you know? Simple slogans, being upfront about your intentions, that's simpler than being meandering. And in all these conversations and all these different streams and all these different uploads and so on and so forth, interviews and what have you, the idea of objections come up. That's part of the dance, but never quite addressed formally in an abstract way, in a way that could be generalized over many different aspects or many different, shall I say, pursuits slash endeavors, ends outcomes that are being chased, how to deal with objections, how to look at them, and what does overcoming them actually mean. Now, I would say that, <laughs> wait, hold on one second here. Let's go through this list real quick. Basically, there's a mental state aspect, obviously, that goes without saying, but it needs some unpacking, right? And then there is the finding of the objection. We'll talk about what that means. Knowing how to create urgency rather than desperation. And demonstrate a willingness to compete and then rewind to the point, right? Or the stage in the game where communication broke down. And the last one is just a small little thing about, a, about relationships. The first five points though, super key. In other words, preparing your mind state for objections, finding the objection, 
because don't expect them to tell you the objection. And we'll talk about why that is and how that is in a very intuitive way. We understand we are social mammals out here in the various economies and markets, in the eco system, if you will, the social ecosystem, transacting, contracting, and so on and so forth. So preparing your mind state, identifying the objections, understanding how to categorize them, creating urgency, demonstrate willingness to compete. How do these overcome objections? How is this a formal way of looking at objections? So let's just get to the beginning and the obvious one, which we need to get out of the way first and foremost, which is that preparing your mind state, okay? A couple of points here to discuss around. The name of the game is the confidence, right? And that confidence is not a magic bullet. However, if you do not have formal ways, okay? of improving your confidence, then you are actually reducing your chances of winning. It is not a silver bullet, but if you do not visualize the objections, because that'll simply give you an understanding. Number one is you need to visualize the objections and this mental game aspect of it, which is critical, key, fundamental, and first. You, you need to understand clearly enough what it is you're asking for and whom you're asking it from such that you can envision the possible objections that they will have. Whatever your goal may be, your goal may be trying to get an appointment. Your goal may be trying to get somebody to issue you a purchase order. Your goal may be trying to get an introduction or a referral from one client that is referring you to another. But literally saying, what is the landscape here? And what are the possible objections? Visualize those objections and then become comfortable with whatever feeling arises. You're gonna be feelings in your body about the objections and so on and so forth. You want to be able to dance loosely with those feelings because they will come up and you want to train yourself to be used to those, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, Red Sings the Blues in the house, Sanjay Hana in the house, Dr. Thunder in the house. So overcoming objections, preparing your mind state, number one, that is number one. You visualize the objections, become comfortable with the feeling that comes with that. And then you want to visualize or think about possible winning situations, okay? The big part of your mind game is, number one, understanding the landscape, right? So what are the possible objections that could come from this person given what I'm asking them and given their particular situation? They could say, hey, uh, maybe I need to talk to my wife. They could say, I need to talk to the director of finance. They could say, well, let me think about it. They could say, we're not making that kind of a purchase right now. They could say all kinds of things, but you need to know 
what the possibilities are based on what you're asking and whom you're asking it from and so on and so forth. Visualize it, become comfortable with that, and then visualize a situation, a scenario where you could address. And address doesn't mean they get you the PO right then and there. It means that a way that you can possibly, possibly acknowledge Okay. Agree, acknowledge, and move past because that's what it ends up having to be. The objection, usually by asking a question. So the mental game is, number one, figuring out what the particulars of the situation is so that you can think about the particular kinds of objections that could arise. Familiarize yourself with it, mind, body, and soul, if you will. Don't just have it be a mental thing. Actually visualize it. Sit there and put yourself in the situation where you're visualizing it because that way you're going to put your system through certain feelings. Certain feelings are going to arise. The best situation, obviously, is to role play this kind of a thing. But... Ultimately, what you're trying to do is first and foremost, understand the landscape, get used to the feelings, and then visualize the winning, the winning, the addressing of these for two reasons. Number one, so that you practice. If at the off chance, one of these particular kinds of objections happened in the kind of way you imagined it, then boom, it's almost like an interview question or something that you rehearsed for. But more importantly, you want to visualize yourself winning so that you have that confidence edge, which we mentioned is not a silver bullet. But if you do not do it, you increase your chances of losing. Yes, let's put it in that kind of a weird negative construction. Increasing your chances of losing. That's why, that's what the confidence game is about. Not that it is a silver bullet. And you got to understand again that objections are not picking a lock or wrestling match or some kind of an argument. It's not a game per se. It is a different kind of a game. It is more like a wax, a ball of wax that needs to be melted away. Okay. So, and that's how we talked about what we're going to talk about next, which is identifying, finding, the objections themselves, because don't expect the people, the clients, whomever it is you're asking something of, don't expect them to tell you the real objection. That leaves them vulnerable. And the real objections are things such as inertia and fear, and doubt, they're rarely rational. So don't ex they're not going to tell you, you know what, I'm scared. That's why I don't want to <laughs> give you this PO right now. That's why I don't feel comfortable going with your particular service product or software. They're not going to tell you that they're scared. But fear might be the entire reason. It is on you to know what the different categories and the kinds of objections in other words, the real, the real objections are. But we're taking it piece by piece, ladies and gentlemen. We are taking it piece by piece. Shout out to Red Sings the Blues and Young Swift in the house. How's everybody doing? How is everybody doing? So we talk about the mental game and let's wrap up the mental game. Let's wrap up the mental game, right? We know that we need to visualize plausible ways of addressing, and we talked about what addressing is, which is you acknowledge, you agree, and then you find a way to ask a question. The whole asking a question thing is because this is more emotional and more of a dance, more of a passing of energy around. The objection is them throwing some energy your way, and the question is, how do you move with this and throw it back at them? Throwing something back at them, not in an offensive way, obviously, but getting 
to the point where you can take things and turn them into questions that you ask back at the person, I think we can intuitively see why that is a nice way of addressing objections, okay? And this part now is just the mental, you're kind of, you're clarifying your mental game, understanding the situation and the possible objections, becoming comfortable with your state, right? The feelings in the body that arise, the thoughts that arise, the fears, the whatever, the discomforts that arise as a result of you thinking and visualizing about these objections, and then plausible solutions and uh, ways of addressing it and so on and so forth, winning so that you go in there with the mindset of winning, okay? That's a big end, okay? If there are two ends to the mental game is number one, understanding the particulars, right? So you can do some practicing. But number two, getting into the arena with a mindset of winning, okay? Sounds cliche and trite, but really what we're talking about is confidence. And we know that intuitively. No need to go too deep into it. I made a whole video about being the most comfortable person in the room. A short one, one of the bicycle ride videos. And we know about why you want to be comfortable and confident. This mental game preparation aspect helps in that case. So number two, what are we going to do? We are going to actually find the objection people. <laughs> what do you mean? We're going to find the objection. As I just said, don't expect people to tell you the objection. So let me get a one in the chat if you understand that people don't want to tell you the real objection because it makes them feel like they have given power to you. They don't want to feel like you have power over them. They don't want to know you to really know the mechanisms behind why they do or do not do things, especially things that you are trying to persuade them to do. Let me get a one in the chat if that aspect of why you actually do need to find, okay, it's a hunt, hunting down objections down to the close. They're not going to give you the real objection because they don't want you to have power over them. Yep. And certain objectives may take some time, that's for sure. But these objections are emotional reasons which can be categorized as under inertia, which is the unwillingness to change, okay? The unwillingness to change is ubiquitous. It is well known. It is common, okay? We all don't want to change in all kinds of ways. There are all kinds of things that we do, all kinds of relationships that we have, all kinds of systems that we participate in. And in all these different ways, we all get stuck in 
any one particular road, one particular mode, one particular pattern, and we don't want to change, right? So it would not surprise us to know that the real objection a lot of times is just an unwillingness to make a change. And rather than treat this as a wrestling match, a lock to pick, a puzzle to play, it is more important that you understand that it is more likely an emotional question and that the words that they are telling you are just certain kinds of rehearsed things that we use to guard ourselves, number one, because we don't want you to have power over certain kinds of information, especially information about the mechanisms of how we are going to make decisions, okay? And that's kind of why it's very good to, if you're in sales, it's important to be good because, you know, if you're not so great at being a janitor, maybe the mirror in the elevator is not so crisp. But people actually have bad experiences from bad sales conversations. You know, the used car salesman haunts some people's dreams. So it is important to be good at it. It is important to understand things such as what is a lock to pick, which is more like closing. Closing is more technical because closing is where you need to really understand that future very clearly about the use. Closing is where people want to also get ready to talk about red tape and maybe a little bit of agreements, warranties, insurance, what happens if this, that, and the other. So at that point, when you've gotten over the objections to the point where you're closing, it gets quite technical. But getting over objections is more of a different kind of a dance. Okay? That's why I say objections are more like wax that you melt away with fire. Shout out to so provider speaks in the house. And shout out to I-12 for giving me that particular phrase and that particular visual of the flame next to the wax, melting it away. How far? How far, bros? <laughs> ID. ID. No shaking. <laughs> So identify, and we talked about the possible categories. So how do we go through this process of basically identifying objections, okay? And what you want to do is you want to ask certain questions about their past, okay? You want to ask if you're selling water bottles. Well, when was the last time you bought water bottles, right? Because you're trying to get into that whole mechanism of decision-making to see what exactly, how they make decisions, when was the last time they made that kind of a decision, how did it go? And a lot of this is not rocket science. In other words, you're not, you're not being some kind of verbal tactician, which I think a lot of people think um, is necessary. Since convincing people, persuading people, influencing people, and selling to people is mainly an emotional thing, you need to understand that it's not some kind of verbal tactician move that you're doing. You are guiding people into states that they get themselves into when they say certain things and think about certain things. Like if they start thinking about the last time that they purchased, they're going to go through certain things about, and they're going to need to work through certain things about their purchasing behavior, right? Let me get a one in the chat again, if that makes sense, okay? Basically, you want to ask them about their purchasing behavior because you want to be able to induce them into a certain state. And it's not about exactly what they say and then exactly what you say. So when was the last time you bought this? When was the last time you made a decision? Or when was the last time you guys changed your software to? And then that begins to open up that part of their consciousness. And they're going to need to have to work th through certain things, right? And you're just kind of there to guide them and to find out if they're more of a inertia person or more of a fear person or more of a 
lack of clarity about the future person, right? And it's not crazy verbal gymnastics. It's not arguing in front of the Supreme Court. It's not arguing in front of the Supreme Court. And that's why I said it's important to remember about objections is that they are not wrestling matches, arguments, puzzles, or locks to pick. It is more like a ball of wax that you melt away because it's really not there. It's words that are blocking some kind of emotional inertia. Why this person doesn't want to do this thing. AKA, give me my money. Why don't you want to buy my product service software so that I can get this money to reinvest in this business? Because I need that money, sir. So, first we talk about getting your mental game down, getting your mind right so that you come out the other end, understanding the particulars of the situation, having visualized certain objections and plausible ways of getting over those objections and visualizing yourself winning, then you're going to be in a position to have that confidence boost. Confidence boost increases your chances of winning. That's why you do it. Then there's a question of finding these objections. Don't expect them to tell you because they are not really real. And not a lot of people want to give you that power to begin with. They don't want to give you the power. So that's how we all are. We don't, we're not just going to give the power to somebody just because they ask for it or they're trying to figure out how to make us do something. No, we're going to be guarded about it. There's going to be layers of fluff that's hiding the real reason why they don't want to do it. Okay. That's the way you should expect this particular dance to go. Right. So asking questions about objections so that you can get to the real objection, okay? We talked about the fact that there's going to be layers. We talked about the fact that it is wax being melted, okay? Therefore, you want to ask about last positions and behavior. You want them to get into a mind space where they're dealing with their particular anxieties or insecurities about making this purchase. We've all been there. Purchases are kind of nerve wracking. <laughs> Either way, there's some kind of, they're an emotional experience. That's why people go out and buy things to feel better, so on and so forth, right? It is an emotional experience. And you want to dig through to find out what the core is. So basically, what I'm saying there in this bullet point that says walk past the objection and ask for another. That's one of the most key aspects of this finding the objection game. This is a key aspect, ladies and gentlemen. This is something that you should definitely pay attention to and try to utilize, which is to ask, is there a reason why you would not buy these water bottles from me, right? And then when they give you the reason, which is, oh, well, it is because of X, and that reason could be any reason. Simply then just ask the follow-up question, which is, other than X, is there any other reason why you wouldn't buy these water bottles from me? So you're just marching down the line, and people will follow you because people will understand that there are a number of objections, right? So they're not going to be like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? I just told you. Are you calling me a liar? No. They know that they have multiple objections. What you're doing is you're trying to cut deep into the stack of objections, right? So they'll just give you the next objection. And you'll be able to tell if this is more real <clears throat> than the first one that was given. The first one that was given was just, ah, I don't think we're making this kind of a purchase right now. Oh, well, when was the last time you guys made this kind of a purchase? 
And then they may talk a little bit about that. Okay. Well, then, other than the fact that you haven't made this kind of a purchase right now, is there any other reason why you would not buy this? Is there any reason why we can't just get this over with, get out of your hair, you'll be done. You don't have to think about this again. Asking for other objections, just walking past the objection. Somebody just told you, hey, I don't like it because of X. And you'd be like, oh, okay, cool. Well, other than X, is there any other reason why you don't like it? Other than X, is there any other reason why we should not pull the trigger? Trying to find the objection. Okay. And this works in any scenario. It doesn't matter what you're trying to convince somebody of. The easiest and most straightforward one is trying to get dollars out of people's pockets, right? And that is why it is where these kinds of techniques are best honed because you can get measurements, best practices, if you will, right? Shout out, shout out, shout out to Chaos Rain. Chaos Rain in the house. Fun conversation we had the other day. So, ladies and gentlemen, we wanted to go over in a formal way, even though we have gone over in other videos. We have touched upon in other videos the idea of objections, whether we're talking about persuasion, simplicity of language, or we're talking about how to close the deal or the buying stages and so on and so forth. But Today, we wanted to kind of come out and just in a formal way address how we model objections. And we're having a mental model of wax that we're melting away with a flame. And it's not a lock to pick a jujitsu match to have, an argument to have with them. Don't expect them to tell you because it's about them not wanting you to have the power. You have to go in, though, and ask the questions about past purchasing behavior, about if other than the fact that you've never used this before, is there any other reason why you wouldn't do this? When was the last time you did this? Do you often, you know, to get closer and closer to the reality of what the objection actually is so that you can then address it or walk past it? Because a lot of times, the reason why I'm using the wax analogy as well is because a lot of times, it just is all wax all the way down. In other words, it's just this emotional dance that has to do with what? What does the emotional dance have to do with? Okay, What are we talking about? What are the categories? We addressed them or alluded to them earlier. We talked about inertia. We talked about this big thing, which is going to be very clear when I mention it, which is that... <laughs> We don't like change, right? So when you're trying to convince somebody of anything, change a behavior of some kind. Come use my new enterprise software for your customer relations management, your CRM system. Whatever it is you're trying to convince somebody of, you need to realize that there's a big inertia whether they like you, before they like you, regardless of how much they may like you or know you, but there is still this inertia which needs to be addressed. It's almost like a physical law. You will not get people to change easily just because. You could call it laziness if you will. Okay? But there's a big inertia there. And there's a barrier to entry question. I don't want to have to sign up this new stuff. I don't want to have to change my bank account and then have to change the numbers in all the bills in all the sites that I have it set up for. I don't want to have to change the credit card on my Amazon One Touch purchase. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. That is a lot of the times, or shall I say all the time, is a subtext in the mind of this person you're trying to convince to do something. <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen, huh? 
yeah, hopefully this is making sense to you guys. Hopefully you guys are getting the picture here in the sense of finding the real objection, understanding where the objections actually reside, which is in the realm of emotion surrounded it with inertia and difficulties getting over barriers to entry, which is a certain kind of laziness, a certain kind of like, I don't want to have to change things. So asking questions about, well, besides this, why would you not do it? Besides that, that's what, why would you not do it? It's legitimate because you're going to be circling through and hopefully slicing through, like peeling an orange and getting down to the point where they just overcome the objection by themselves. This is the self having them overcome the objection themselves kind of a path because I tend to think it is just that ball of wax that you're just a fire. You just be a fire by this wax and it will come down. It is just a matter of fact, yes, sir. People will be their own barrier. They are their own barrier. It's not a question of can be. They most reliably are. That is the first place to look to find the culprit and the barrier is in people. But in this case, we're just talking about convincing people. We're not fighting them. We're trying to influence them. We're trying to persuade them. We're trying to get the purchase order. We're trying to get the deal. Okay. We are trying to get them to represent us as a, a real estate agent and get the best deal out of them, or they are trying to do that with us. A lot of times you end up finding that there is a lot of objections, objection overcoming that needs to be done, whether you're selling or you're buying. You're interacting in this social landscape in various marketplaces various places where values are exchanged. And you will find that being able to understand the landscape of objections, objecting to do something is very, 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 very important. So we talk about the mindset and then now we're talking about finding the objections. You find them where? You find them in the barriers to entry, in the inertia, and also in the lack of clarity about the future. Basically, they need a story and they need to be able to clearly see themselves in the future of that story. So, ladies and gentlemen, and Young Swift, let me know if you know what I mean here, but you have probably tried to buy something before. Like, let's say I need to buy this particular new camera to step up my video or my wedding photography business or something like that. But you're not so confident that you're going to use the camera to the best of its capacity, Young Swift. Let me get a one in the chat if you understand the lack of clarity about the future being a huge barrier for all of us to make certain decisions and make certain moves. Okay. I don't want to get this new Apple computer, which I know I need to get in order to get my video processing and my music stuff all in line because I'm not really sure I can be up to the challenge. I'm not really sure it's going to work. I'm not really sure I'm going to pull my part. I'm going to do my part. I'm not really sure I'm going to be able to wake up every morning at 6 a.m. or whatever if I get this new Tybo machine or class. I'm not really sure I'm gonna. it's going to work because I'm not really sure I'm up to it. So that is a key thing going through the back of the heads. So hopefully it's making sense ladies and gentlemen, which is what's really going on mo most reliably and perhaps always there and then everything else is an addition when it comes to objections in other mammals, right? Because you need to just break it down to that level when you start talking about social things. It's just mammal to mammal. There's no need to get brainy about it. That's why I'm saying it's not some kind of crazy lockpicking, jujitsu match, argumentation in front of the Supreme Court. No, that's not what getting over objections are. You're a warm fire 
to melt the wax away. And the wax has to do with things that are in inertia space, in I don't have clarity about the future. I don't know if it'll work. I don't know if I can do it. I had a bad experience the last time I tried this kind of a thing, space. And these things come out in words like, well, we need to look at this for the next quarter, or well, we are not making that purchase right now, or well, so on and so on and so on and so on. There may be real objections back there, though. Like, you know what? My cousin is the supplier of, uh, my cousin is the salesman, okay, for Salesforce, the software company. And that's why we use Salesforce in my company, okay? My cousin gives me a kickback. I'm never changing. At least you want to get to the point where you find that kind of an objection. Other kinds of talk tend to be a covering. Yes, Young Swift, it's like people want to have the perfect plan. So how do you overcome? How do you think, Young Swift, you would overcome the objection of somebody that you're trying to convince to, you know, buy your exercise machine or something like that? And he has an objection because he's not really feeling like he has a plan to, that he can execute the plan or that he has a perfect plan for executing the use of this machine and getting the, the full benefits of it, right? This is to then put you in the mind state of, if you go back to step one, which is prepare your mind game, right? You think, okay, what kind of a picture, what kind of a story, what kind of a painting do I have to place in this person's head in order for them to be more confident about them pulling through them using my superior software, my superior workout gear, my superior services, right? My superior saxophone skills in the case of Dr. Thunder. Why shouldn't they? They should use. Yeah, so you get the point. What kind of a picture do you have to paint? What kind of story do you have to tell? Because selling people the future is what you sell them whenever you're trying to sell them a product. You're not selling them a pen. You're selling them a future where they are the owners of this pen. Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> you do not sell this pen. You're selling me a future where I own this pen. And therefore, it becomes a little bit more than and perhaps more significantly more than pen. The future, the ownership, the picture, the story that is being told that surrounds this pen is what's really more important. Hence, when you're talking about objections, what's really more important is them not having confidence in the future, the future that you are trying to get them into, right? <laughs> and it is your job to be the dream weaver of their future. And this is where one can get out of that mind space of thinking that any kind of a promotion any of yourself or selling of something, persuasion, influencing, so on and so forth. If you're thinking that it's all dirty business, then you need to understand that there's almost a part of it that's therapeutic if done right, because you're pushing people in certain directions that a lot of times, if you're, if you're any good at what you do and you're selling yourself, for example, or if you're selling a product and it's any good, which you should, it should be the case because you should not be selling crappy stuff. Then you're putting people in a better place and you want to help them put themselves there too mentally, right? upgrade your laptop so that you can upgrade the quality of your video editing software and storage capacity so you can upgrade your YouTube channel. But people are thinking, ah, am I really up to upgrading my YouTube channel? That's really what's going through their head. It's not really the cost of the laptop. They're thinking, will it work? Can I pull through? Will I be able to pay my end? So you're there to help paint the picture, reduce the barrier to entry, in the case of inertia, for example, you're reducing the barrier to entry. But let's move on, okay? 
because I don't want this to be too long. Let's see. Right? Because we're just uh we're keeping it simple, we're keeping it light. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? How is everybody doing tonight? One hundred percent, Young Swift. Get pushed to negative situations. You're trying to push him to a positive situation. You need to be obviously in coming to this in good faith. The fact that you're doing good should be a given. You are a superior hair salon. You are a superior seller of weave and sandals, right? <laughs> I heard Orlando Johnson has that great weave and sandal game sewn up all through the East Coast. He is the weave and sandal man. So you have that superior product, superior service, superior software, superior experience that you're giving, a better direction that you're trying to put somebody in, but they have inertia and they have fear about the future. So this is not a puzzle. This is about mammalian warmth and a little bit of pushing through. Okay. Orlando Johnson laughs. Well, it's not true. You don't have that weaving sandal game uh, sewn up. I heard wrong. I don't think I heard wrong. <laughs> so number three because number one was get your mental game right okay visualize visualize the objections and you overcoming the objections okay number two is finding okay and we just talked about that and now number three we're talking about creating urgency and not desperation there's a big difference one is good which is urgency desperation is bad desperation is you having commission breath you being desperate for the sale. That's not what you want. What you want is urgency. You want them to know that this is the time to upgrade to that Macintosh and get their video editing business. Okay. This is the time to do that. As opposed to, uh, you, I really need my paycheck. Now, this needs to be mentioned because you do really need your paycheck. <laughs> All right. Let me get one in the chat if I'm making myself clear vis-a-vis -vis the difference between creating urgency on the side of the customer versus you showing your desperation. This needs to be upfrontly addressed in your mental game because you do need your paycheck. That's why you're trying to sell to them. So that part is going to be there. So that part, you need to deal with it. So that part is more of a suppression thing where you're like, <clears throat> you need to demonstrate mastery, confidence, and comfort, right? And needing your paycheck and being desperate of any kind, desperation of any kind will close the wallets and drive the ladies away and no one want to work with you, okay? However, you want to push for urgency. That is the tightrope walk that you're doing because urgency leads the people to buy, okay? Because if you keep, okay, Young Swift, if you keep that person that doesn't want to buy your machine, <clears throat> that doesn't want to buy your machine, if you keep them like, okay, well, you know, maybe, maybe they'll get around to it, the chances that they ever do it are less and less. The point is it takes urgency, this kind of a, they need this little boost in order to get something done. People need to feel a sense of urgency in order to do these kinds of things that they have fear about. Okay, they have fear about the future because they have fear about them using the product in the right way, it working for them, them being able to put in their part, the work, the diligence, so on and so forth.
Yeah. Urgency. Urgency so they can do it. Urgency so they will do it. Urgency so that you actually helped them. You were almost there to give him that little boost, that little shot, like, hey, it's time to start your future, right? Because you're always selling a future because we live in Storyville. Ha, 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 ha. That was uh, yesterday's stream, but that's a theme, if you will. That's an organizing principle that I use to function out here in these streets. <laughs> and it seems to work. Stories, the future, their story, their future, as opposed to trying to fight jujitsu matches verbally. No. That works in approximation a lot of times because it could just be a version of high pressure sales. What's the highest pressure sale? I could put a gun to your head, right? So we understand that level. And then from there, then there's just less and less levels of pressure in terms of selling and overcoming objections and stuff, right? So if you do verbal jujitsu and it works, it was more just a high pressure sale move that you did. Some lower level of put it, putting a gun to someone's head. They just wanted you to shut up and leave and they signed or something. You did something like that. But Overall, the point is, yes, you could pressure someone, but if you understand exactly what the landscape is of objections, understand they're not going to tell you, understand you need to find it, understand that ask, walking past an objection is not rude or crazy. Somebody tells you, hey, I don't want to buy your, I don't want to go out with you because you're too short. Right. Someone tells you, I don't want to go out with you because you're too short. You can we just go right, walk right past that objection and say, well, other than the fact that I'm too short, is there any other reason why you wouldn't go out with me? Oh, I'm too short. Yeah, I already knew that. Yes, that is 100% correct. Other than that, other than the fact that I'm too short, is there any other reason why? In other words, walking past an objection is is fine. Working past a verbal objection is fine because you're just trying to get to the emotional core of it. And as a matter of fact, you're just turning up that flame to melt it away because a lot of times there's nothing really there. And if there's something there, then you are glad you found it because that's how you know you've pushed the sale all the, to its furthest point. Where you find the, hey, my cousin is the CEO of Salesforce, and that's why I use the Salesforce software. That's going to be a tough one. And then, wait, but the the point is, you need to be able to. If you can get there, then you've won. That's why I was going to mention, but I decided to wait until this point to mention what overcoming means. We talked about objection, just like a ball of wax, you're melting it away, so on and so forth. But what does it mean to overcome it? Well, obviously, if you want to be completely objective about it, when you get the sale, yes, when you get the purchase order, where it, it be immediately or a year from now, yes, you can say that's when you know, yes, you did indeed overcome the objection. But overcoming the objection could be also finding the real objection and addressing it, acknowledging it and addressing it. Addressing looks like basically doing the emotional dance where they throw something at you, which is the objection, and then you're able to de def deflect, not in a bad way, okay? All right, not the bad kind of deflection, but I mean, use the energy and then turn it into a question. Turn it into a question that you ask them about this particular objection that they have. Okay. Yeah, the last time I bought this, blah, 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 blah. That's why I'm never going to do that. And then you just take that and then you ask them like, oh, well, oh, really? How did that, How did it go? Did you guys do this the last time you do? How did that experience? Like they're telling you about a horrible experience they had, okay, which gives them an objection as to why they don't want to go with you or whatever. They're telling you about a bad experience and you're asking them about the bad experience. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Recentering their focus. That is a big part. That's why I say, um, that's why the comfort is so important. Be that's why it is an emotional thing. You know, it's like um, there is a huge difference between a bar with the right kind of comfortable lounge chairs that you sit at the bar, you know, the bar stools, real nice, comfortable ones for big guys like me. Um, with the lighting and a very knowledgeable bartender and so on and so on and so on. There's a big difference between that and just the alcohol that you can get and put in your freezer, a bottle of Grey Goose in your freezer. Okay. And the art of persuasion is the bar and the lighting and the setting and all that stuff. Okay. Does that make sense? Let me get a one in the chat. If we're trying to create this whole thing about, we're trying to make sure that we completely understand in all 365 degrees, oh, 360 degrees, that is, that'd be 365 days. All 360 degrees, the fact that over here, objections is not about puzzles or arguments, that basically it is more like the bar, the lighting, the setting, and so on and so forth. You need to be there to be that warm fire that gets them to recenter their focus, think about the future, so on and so on and so on. So, and again, because I'm an introvert, I make these kinds of videos specifically because I'm an introvert, because I know that a lot of introverts don't go into the persuasive arts for obvious reasons. But I think that with a clear understanding of what it actually is, you begin to see, oh, it's not just jibber jabber. <laughs> it's not just some silly um, small talk. It's not small talk. Okay. Being able to overcome an objection, being able to close a deal, it's not small talk. And it is not verbal jujitsu, because I think that's something that introverts will probably not like too, because they're like, why do I have to have this? I, I, you know, <laughs> why do I have to deal with this crap? You know? So when you realize it's not small talk, nor is it verbal jujitsu, it is more of a confidence game in yourself. You haven't visualized possible objections. You understanding that really it's about inertia and them not being clear about the future, that what they're saying to you is not really the real objection and that that is fine, 100% fine. And that's how we all rock, right? Then this helps in you seeing the game differently. To rise in any particular profession, whether it be in politics or in medicine or engineering or whatever, is to go into a position where you're going into two areas. Number one, more strategic and more influential. In other words, more influential, more leadership by definition, right? <laughs> so that's where the selling comes in, the persuasion, the influencing, the understanding of how to overcome objections what overcoming means and what objections are like, right? So you cannot go from teacher to principal, from lieutenant to general, from, you know, just a dental assistant to the owner of the dentistry without becoming more strategic and being someone more of influence. Shout out to BW Chambers in the house. Very, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for the super chat. Thank you very much for the super chat, sir. So breaking this down, talking about creating urgency, okay? And now we're going to talk about you need to demonstrate a willingness to compete, all right? And you may say, well, of course, I need to demonstrate a willingness to compete. But is that necessarily a uh, purely sales thing? I would say yes. And I'll give you a reason why.
while I fix my microphone stand over here. I'll try to make sure it doesn't fall. I'm looking at real estate in Austin, talking to some real estate agents lately. And basically I was talking to this one particular guy or listening to him anyways. And he would not listen when we brought up the challenging aspects. Like let's say, for example, Young Swift, okay? You're trying to sell this particular machine. And the person says, you know what? I would like to be shredded. I would like to get this other machine with the com combine this and that and so on and so forth. And then you start telling them that, oh, well, you know, that's going to be really hard and maybe you don't want to do that. And I have to fill out this warranty thing and it takes six months to arrive. And last time I sold that to my client, it was a pain. And This was what this person was doing. You want to build up part of the flame, okay? Part of the flame that melts away the objections is your willingness to compete, okay? That is kind of like the mental model that is the particular a mechanism that I'm talking about in this particular section here, okay? But what is this thing about competitiveness? What I'm saying is this, you want, if your client pushes you, right, accept the push, okay? If they want to go above and beyond, go there with them. If they're trying to go into a difficult market, tell them, hey, this is the lay of the land. If you really want to target this part of Houston, Texas, for, or Austin, Texas, because the tech companies are going there and so on and so forth, and people are going to need housing. Well, here's what it's going to take, okay? Here's going to take this much work. He's going to take this, that, and the other. Here's how, we, okay, cool. You ready? Rather than, ah, uh, you know what? That's That's so hard. Let's do the easy stuff over there, over here. That is horrible. And I had a recent experience with a real estate person talking about real estate in Texas, Austin, Texas. And they were uh, not showing a competitive spirit. They were not willing to go to the difficult places. They were not willing to encourage you to go to the difficult places. That is a way of belittling your clients. Exactly. You are helping pushing them into their dream, a future that they have in their mind. As I said, even as simple as a pen, you're selling me a future where I'm the owner of the pen. It's not about the pen. It is about a future. The future. And that's why you, you, you paint these pictures. You start talking about the pen on their desk. Like, wow, wouldn't this pen look great on your desk? Or what kind of laptop do you use? Do you carry... Or wouldn't this be great in your jacket pocket? You like sports coats. Putting it in their life, putting it in their future, putting it in their person. And if they come to you with something that is challenging, rise up to the challenge. Don't show your ability to compete. And basically, another thing is also acknowledge the market, okay? Okay. Acknowledge the market. In other words, yes, I am not the only provider of structural engineering services here. I'm not the only person you can use. I'm not even the big guy in town. As a matter of fact, who do you currently use? What are they currently giving you, right? That kind of a thing. Acknowledge the market and acknowledge that you are there to compete because people want a nice little attack dog on their side. Can I get an amen? Let me get a one in the chat if you can see how this is a tactic for overcoming objections because it's a turning up of that flame, the flame of warmth to melt away their objections. And you're saying, look, I'm going to be your attack little puppy. <laughs> I'm out here to win for you. I'm willing to compete against that guy and that guy and that guy. You don't know this industry. You don't know this workout industry. You don't know what I know about them and what they may be willing to do to you. I'm going to be your attack dog. Again, we are mammals. Again, these things are about mammalian play, social dynamics, inertia, lack of willingness to change.
or unwillingness to change, I should say, is really what's going on. You want to join their team. Couldn't have said it better, Young Swift. Damn, Young Swift, what are you, like 17? Out here, out shining in the comment section, day after day, night after night. Good job, Young Swift. Good job. Still out here in Los Angeles, as you guys can tell. And this is the second day, ladies and gentlemen, of 2021. Happy New Year. If you were not here yesterday or did not watch the replay of yesterday's broadcast, thank you very much. Today, we're talking about overcoming those objections, objections between you and your money, you and your contract, you and your deals, you and your desired outcomes. Okay? You got to prepare your mind game. You got to understand that you got to find the objections. You got to know that you need to project urgency and not desperation. You need, ladies and gentlemen, to show that you will compete and that you're on their team and you're on their side and you're, with, you're willing to go to the top of the hill with them. You're going to take down that? You want to take down that hill? Well, here's what it's going to take. All right, here's the ammunition. Here's the plan. Here are the pitfalls. Here's, I think, a good strategy is what we need to do to take down that hill. That's what you want to be on their side in your particular industry. Whatever your particular expertise is, you want to be their guy. The guy that they know is looking out for them. Okay. And that turns up the flame that melts down the wax of objections, ladies and gentlemen. So... Give, give, give. This one's a basic, simple one. We understand it also basically because of the new internet age, right? Whereby, especially content such as this, for example, right? Give, 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 okay? Giving you free game. Give, 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 give. And then you ask, okay? And then you leverage. And then you use the attention that you've garnered, right? So... Same thing about that warmth. This is basically you playing the long game so that these objections are not going to be an issue for you. Okay. It's basically what you're doing here. That is basically what you are doing here. Now, something else, the last thing I want to mention, and thank you very much for uh, joining this particular session. The last thing I want to mention, and then we'll summarize, is that... Um, When all else fails, you want to backpedal to the place where communication break, broke down. There is a place where communication broke down. And you want to go back and find that place. Generally, you want to avoid that place by, okay, demonstrating the willingness to compete and generally being on their side, listening to what they say, acknowledging it, making sure you understand fully. Repeating the last part of what people say is a great way of listening. Let me say that again, just as a practical point. As we start winding down here, ladies and gentlemen, whoa, I'm missing out here on some super chat action. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you guys very, very much. Shout out to Kiodor in the house. Bernard Riley. Bernard Riley watching in the cuts. Dropping them dubs. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. $20 super chat. That qualifies you for sponsor tier for this second day of January 2021. Sponsor tier is $20, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, get them while you can. Ladies and gentlemen, so as we close this out, okay, you want to have also the ability to backpedal, and this is one of the this is the toughest one of the toughest aspects of doing most things is that you the ability to be able to move backwards. All right, and I'll talk about what that means vis a vis overcoming objections in a second. Shout out. 
to Jeremiah. Jeremiah Yonder. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for the super chats. Definitely much appreciated. Shout out, shout out, shout out. Being able to move backwards, finding where the communication broke down and picking it back up. Okay. That is an aspect of a breakdown that you need to anticipate. Okay. You cannot just go in thinking it's just going to be a linear battle. Okay. Um, it's not going to be just a linear battle. It's not going to be a linear battle. You may have dropped something. You may have not listened very clearly. So as I was saying, when somebody says something, just repeat the last phrase to them. Shout out to, I forget his name now, but he used to be a, he was the head terrorist negotiator for the FBI. Okay. And a guy like that knows a thing or two about the listening, the negotiation, and so on and so forth. But basically, if there's one thing that you can practice, um, one takeaway today, besides the takeaway from the knowledge, which we'll give a summary of in due course very, very soon, ladies and gentlemen. But one thing you can take away today is when somebody says something to you, repeat the phrase, the last part of the phrase to them. What do I mean by that? And have you guys heard this before? Does this make sense? Okay. It's kind of called mirroring. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and explain right now. As Dr. Thunder said, yes, it does relate to most human topics. I, uh, Yes, 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 yes. Influencing, selling, persuading, getting outcomes that you want. In other words, being a social mammal, a mammal by definition is a social animal, but being a particularly social one, we're probably the most social, you know, we're social primate. Then, yeah, this idea of understanding people's decision-making process and how you can influence it in a very systematic, real way is super important. So basically, hmm, LeVar Ball, repeating what people say. Yes. So let's say somebody comes to you and says, last night, we took the yellow cab, all right? And we did not go to our re regular restaurant. We went to the Pink Flamingo. And what do you say? You say, you went to the pink flamingo, right? And then they continue to talk. This does wonders in a number of regards. Subjectively, to begin with, even if you don't repeat what they say, repeat it to yourself in your head, because this will actually focus your mind. You do not want to be thinking about what you are going to be talking about next. Everybody knows that, right? We know that in the chat. We're grown-ups, and uh, we got a couple of brain cells we can rub together. We know that you don't want to be that person that is just listening to respond, right? But how do we actively I'll actually change that? Because the thing about most human endeavors, right, or endeavors in life is that there is, a, there is a machine that you have to deal with, which is your biology, yourself, your being, that you cannot get away from. Okay. So how do you get away from this thing that has this habit of trying to anticipate what somebody is saying? Because the brain tends to do that and then try to see what it's going to say next. So how do you get over that? Basically, you do the practice of repeating in your head what they're telling you. So as they're going with the second restaurant and the pink flamingo you're saying that in your head and then the last part of what they say you repeat so you went to the pink flamingo and they say yeah and guess what janet was there and the cocktails were great and this and that and the other and that reminds me we also talked about the new real estate deal and then you say what you say the new real estate deal <laughs> all right so this I mentioned the first aspect in which it is good subjectively because it helps you get away from you trying to respond or say something. Secondly, it is a way of you being interesting 
by being interested. As a matter of fact, that's the way you hack the system. You are interested in people. You're demonstrating the interest in them by listening to what they say and literally repeating what they say to them so that you're throwing the momentum back to them. Okay. It's like tennis game. You went to the pink flamingo and I just hit it back to you, the pink flamingo. And then you, people tend to continue. If they do not continue, then that was a dead end. That was a cul-de-sac. So now, you know, there's nothing in the pink flamingo. You know what I mean? Then maybe you bring out your ball and you serve your ball, right? But for the most part, all you need to do is listen and then repeat what people say for you to be the most interesting person in the room. <laughs> and I'm not being facetious. I'm not being... This is not hyperbole. It is true. Most of the time, what you need to do is listen and repeat and ask. And most and the people will do most of the talking, and then they'll think that you are an interesting person. <laughs> but you barely told them anything. Because an inquisitive mind is interesting. Okay. And so that was the free, the free game on the repeating, mirroring, listening, question asking type task. So as we close out, I would like to thank you guys again very much. Um, it's been great out here. It's still great. I'll be here till Monday, Los Angeles, that is, and I'll be moving back to the Bay Area. The Bay Area, ladies and gentlemen. So I would like to thank you guys. Thank you guys for the. This is one, two, three. The third podcast out here, third live stream, third show, third exposition, third breakdown of a hypothesis, third little teaching session, third little place or scenario where Young Swift gets to show off his prowess. Getting over objections. Shout out to Lion Legal. The objections that stand in the way of our connections, our deals, concessions, our money. Yes. The greenback. Maybe even some Bitcoin. Those objections standing between us and that thing, we need to learn how to prepare ourselves mentally, number one, right? Visualize these objections. Think about these objections and think about possible ways in which you can overcome them, okay? Think about possible scenarios of you winning. Now you have particulars of the situations and how things could go, number one. And then number two, you also have a winning mindset. In other words, you have confidence. Confidence is not a magic pill, ladies and gentlemen, but it will improve your chances. Or in other words, if you do not play the confidence game, it reduces your chances of winning. If you do not have a formal system of boosting your confidence mentally, then you're just shooting yourself in the foot. In other words, why not do it? You know, it's like brushing your teeth. Just you brush your teeth, do your mental game preparation. Okay. And then you need to be able to find out objections. People are not going to tell you the objections because they don't want to give you the power, right? They don't want you to have the power over their decision-making process or their, on the understanding of what exactly it is that holds them, their inertia, their laziness, their willingness to, unwillingness to change, the barriers to entry that they see, the fact that they don't think that this thing will work, that they will be able to do their part, okay? You need to be able to break down that and see what is really going on behind there. And part of doing that is just walking past the objections. Just ask them the next question. Well, I don't want to do this because of X. And then you say, well, besides X, is there any other reason why you wouldn't do it? And you just keep moving and moving and using the flame to melt the wax of objections away. All right. And then the other sides of what we talked about were more practical things about 
how you need to project urgency and make sure that your urgency is not desperation. Desperation is always bad, always, always, always bad, right? I mean, that's uh, that's a given, okay? But you do want your paycheck. This is the whole thing about, well, you do have this machinery that is going to feel desperate. You do want your paycheck. You do want her IG or whatever it is you're after. And maybe some desperation leaks out. Therefore, you want to have a system for making sure that that is not the case. Partially, this is done by having your mental game down. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, you want to have a way of putting urgency. And urgency can even be like, you know what? I could, how about I just, we get this done in a week and I'm out of your hair. In other words, urgency could be like, you know what? I'll save you the headache of having to make this decision in the future. I'll save you the headache of having to think about enterprise software. Think about the musician you're going to use for your wedding. Think about who's going to be your personal trainer. Think about who's going to provide this particular engineering service. Whatever your business software product is, whatever it may be. I'll save you the trouble of having to push this into the future. Let's just take care of it right now, right? So that can be a way of creating urgency, but without doing the whole desperation thing. You don't want to do the desperation thing. And that's kind of like the ball of wax, okay? We are overcoming objections. Objections are like the ball of wax. We're using heat on them. They are not locks to pick. They are not jujitsu fights to have mental gymnastics to do. No, that's not the nature of it. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you guys for coming out. And uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed it while I'm over here missing super chats and stuff. <laughs> wow. We got the heavy hitter. Manosphere mana in the house. Thanks for the gems. I'm new to the Manosphere and have seen you pour into many. Gotcha. Gotcha. Pour into many. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is the second day of monetization. And um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A big part of it is circulation. Okay. Circulation. Because you support me. And I support Solo TV 84 and Solo TV 84 so four does something else also within this space. You understand that this same $20 is can go around and get a lot more done if you keep it around the hood. We all know this. We know this. We know this very well in terms of keeping money within a particular area. You can use $20 10 times if you have a nice little rotation and $200 worth of work will be done with the same $20 by passing it around. So pass it around, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? So we are out. Persuasion. Go out there and do it. Influencing. Get better at it. Get better at overcoming objections. They're emotional. They're about these person's lack of uh, confidence in the future. Will they use this product? Will it work for them? Ah, I have inertia. I don't want to do this. I don't want to change my password. I don't want to put in my new credit card number. In this. Uh, yeah. Okay. Understand that that's generally what is going on, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to Young Swift Line Legal and everyone else in the house. Shout out to those of you who guys who uh, did the Super Chat Manners for Amana in the house. Shout out to Bernard Riley in the house. And let's put these to practice, okay? And it doesn't matter if you're in a sales position. Basically, you understand that to move up in any position is to become in a position of more influence, more persuasion, and so on and so forth. It is the name of the game. Plus, it cuts across all kinds of human interactions anyways. It's just part of growing up. Part of growing up is understanding negotiation, okay? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and we shall continue to battle the battle within, fight the good fight as I try to link up. <laughs> uh, got a couple more days out here in LA and it's been great and uh, great New Year's so far. Great streams we've been having. Enjoy this time with you guys, sharing ideas, thinking thoughts, clarifying things, 
making sure that we are indeed being better and doing better. You know, we're keeping things simple, measurable, actionable. We're holding ourselves accountable and so on and so forth. Shout out. Peace. Relentless in the war, the legions in our hearts, shed what us in our balls, the spirit and the flesh, the emotions that are rest, the cerebral will contest, propelling the unrest. Preachers and bandits with means on the handed, the teachers pedantic and lack understanding. So sweep out the sand with the broom in your hand, stand up, make we born Babylon. Guess I can give the world to you, the world to you, but the falling of the curtain is for certain. Be careful where you lurk in demon searching. The spirit and the women fight the battle within Cause I can give the world to you, the world to you But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you're lurking, demons searching The spirit and the women fight the battle within Semblance of a blaze with gratitude and rage. We touch another page with delirious delight, impervious to light. This vitality and might encourages the flight. Preachers and bandits with means on the hand, and the teachers pedantic and lack understanding. So sweep out the sand with the broom in your hand. Stand up, make we born Babylon. Cause I can give the world to you, the world to you, but the falling of the curtain is for certain. Be careful where you lurk in demon search. The spirit and the women fight the battle within Guess I can give the world to you, the world to you But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you're lurking, demons searching The spirit and the women fight the battle within But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you're lurking, demons searching The spirit and the women fight the battle within Cause I can give the world to you, the world to you But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you're lurking, demons searching The spirit and the women fight the battle within